Purchasing a pair of hearing aids is only one of many factors that must be considered in order to hear one's best in spite of hearing loss. Other factors that need to be addressed after hearing aid purchase include programming and physically fitting the hearing aid to the ear canal. And when it comes to fitting, the ear mold vent size is key to ensuring the best possible hearing amplification with the least amount of hearing aid auditory complaints. Now a hearing aid vent is basically an opening in the hearing aid dome or ear mold. The vent can be very large or extremely small or even absent. However, choosing the right vent size will impact four things, occlusion effect, natural sound transmission, feedback, and low frequency amplification. First, is the occlusion effect. The occlusion effect is simply the increased perception of hearing your own voice and internal body noises like breathing or chewing when something is blocking the ear canals. You can create the occlusion effect by sticking your fingers in your ears and talking. The volume increase in the perception of your own voice is the occlusion effect. When it comes to hearing aids, the occlusion effect occurs if the vent is too small relative to your low frequency hearing loss. Here is a table that illustrates how big the vent needs to be in order to avoid the occlusion effect. The second factor that vent size impacts is how much natural sound can enter the ear canal. The larger the vent, the more natural sound can enter the ear canal. If you're like most people, you have good low frequency but bad high frequency hearing. In this situation, a large vent will not only prevent the occlusion effect, but also allows natural unamplified low frequency sounds to enter the ear canal and mix with the amplified high frequency sounds. Such blending of natural low frequency with amplified high frequency sounds results in the best possible outcome in achieving normal hearing that sounds natural. If the vent size is too small, not only will it prevent you from using your better low frequency hearing, it could actually make your low frequency hearing worse resulting in poor sound quality and reduced speech understanding. Then the question becomes, why not use a big vent all the time? Unfortunately, the bigger the vent, the greater the risk for feedback which is issue number 3. Feedback is whistling or warbling that occurs when the hearing aid microphone picks up and amplifies any sound that leaks out of the ear canal in a cyclical manner. As such, you want to keep the vent as small as possible to prevent any sound leakage from coming out of the ear. But not so small that it causes the occlusion effect. Finally, the fourth factor that vent size impacts is the ability to amplify low-frequency sounds. If the vent is large, it is impossible to adequately amplify low-frequency sounds as it will all leak out of the ear instead of being trapped inside the ear canal. With such sound leakage, the low-frequency sounds will go unheard. As such, if you do have a low-frequency hearing loss that requires amplification, you have to make the vent size as small as possible. In summary, in order to get the best possible hearing from your hearing aids, the proper vent size must be utilized that fits with your hearing loss pattern. The goal is to make the vent as large as possible to minimize occlusion effect, but not so large that you get audio feedback and loss of any low-frequency amplification. A professional audiologist can help determine the best vent size, especially for those with a complex hearing loss pattern.